so this is the picture that your textbook has, uh, both of this picture and these pictures. And the thing that's a little bit um, limiting with these pictures is that they're kind of static. And even though they try with these, it's a, um, I don't know, it, maybe as you look at the figure and you read it through, maybe it makes a sense. If it does, great. And um, what I think is sometimes helpful is to have a, a visual representation that's not a static image. So when you go to the Fed, and I think this simulation, they already pour, uh, uh, ported or um, transferred over to HTML5. So it'll actually, you don't have to go through any complicated bypasses. You can just run it. Uh, let me see here. It should be under light and radiation. I think it's a dissimulation here, wave interference. You can see from the picture that it kind of looks similar to what you were seeing before. Um, and this simulation has a few different uh, representations to emphasize that it's uh, um, this, uh, the kind of thing that's described here is um, universal. So one representation we can use is a water wave. That's a, this drip, 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 this thing. And in fact, I have a lecture demo using water waves. I think uh, you say, um, I linked to, to it in one of the uh, uh, pages. I think there's like two minute demo of me using something like this, uh, like a physical demo. And, um, and this is with the sound waves. <laughs> and uh, this is kind of visualized the version of the pressure wave. Uh, let's say black is high pressure, white is light, low pressure. And this is the, uh, expanding wave of high pressure and low pressure region. That's what sound wave is. Or a light wave, and here they use laser to illustrate. Or I guess that's not really laser if it's not focused at all. Or it's laser except they kind of made it so that it looks like a point source that's diverging out all over the place. Laser that's passed through a very narrow slit. I think that, <laughs> that might be a way to describe it. So, so this is a, a wave description. And um, so when you have a, just a single wave, it's, you know, it's not very interesting. So wave arrives here and especially for light wave, it's a very high frequency wave. Um, the frequency of visible light is something like 10 to the 15 Hertz. So we don't see those oscillations directly. What we see is the time averaged uh, intensity time averaged uh, version of the square of the electric field in the light wave. So in a setup like this, on the screen, you would see something very bland. Like, uh, well, like what you see on my hand. I have a light source here that's illuminating this hand that looks kind of flat, but what you're gonna see on the screen um, with a single source. What you, you start to see more interesting things when you have more than one source then those multiple sources can interfere with each other. So, you know, I, right now I just turned on one, so it does nothing. Or, you know, it does something that's very boring. And now if I turn this off and I turn on the other, it'll also do something that's gonna look very boring. Um, you know, it illuminates the screen, it looks all uniform, nothing interesting. You get something interesting when you have two sources. And this is the interference phenomena. And in, in our description of a double slit interference, what we are describing is places where constructive interference happens. And place, these are the bright fringes and places where destructive interference happens. And there are some simple things we can describe how this interference pattern depends on frequency or the wavelength of light. When you have high frequency or short wavelength of light, the interference pattern becomes narrower given everything else that's the same. And when you have low frequency or the long wavelength of light, the interference pattern becomes uh, more broadly spread out. And you can actually see that in the expressions for the conditions for these. And, um, and uh, yeah, this is, I guess, 
I encourage you to check out the simulation, play with it. Um, it can it can be a good setup to illustrate some of the things that uh, we try to describe it in words and with our put in our best effort, but sometimes uh, words um, produce misrepresentation or even when we use figures, sometimes figures can be misleading in certain ways. And the simulation is uh, slightly less misleading in that it's interactive, it responds to changes. So you can do your own experiments. You can like predict and check and do all sorts of stuff. So, yeah. I guess even here it's uh, kind of hard to demonstrate it. Can I? Um, yeah, not unless I do the side of you. Well, even if I do the side of you, I don't think it'll quite work. Because uh, what you have to be able to visualize it, so you know, this line of destructive interference kind of trying to figure out why is uh, there is there no oscillation up and down here. You can kind of pick out a, a point and figure that when you figure distance from here to the one source of light, distance from here to another source of light, that the difference in the distance is like uh, uh, um, uh, half integer multiple, or it's a multiple of like 0 0.5, 1.5, 2.5, 3.5 of the wavelength. So whenever one wave is going up, the other wave is uh, going down, so they cancel out. Um, yeah, I, I guess I'll leave that there. We might play with this a little bit more next week. Um, especially for diffraction. Oh wait, this is X-ray diffraction. I don't think of that. Is it X-ray diffraction? No, it's a, uh, oh, actually, you know, I've never seen this before. It's a, uh, uh, yeah, it, this, so this can be used to show something called um, Poisson spot, maybe? No, wait, uh, I don't think, wait. Oh, I guess, is that the hole? Oh. Yeah, yeah, I think the wide is, that's not the shadow, that's the hole. So yeah, when you have a circular hole, then yeah, that's gonna produce, so, okay. You can use this to illustrate the the poison thing, uh, yeah, Never mind. But um, it, it's useful for illustrating um, optical defects, so, when you imagine this like a camera hole, then this is the effect of the single solid diffraction that you will see next week, not even this week. So, um, yeah, I think let me leave that there. Um, any questions? 